So today we're going to find out if a modern day Japanese pole saw can compete with a skill saw. We're going to do a Monte Carlo start. All right, this is going to be exciting. I got this pole saw from uh, Amazon a couple weeks ago. I haven't really had a chance to use it yet. And of course, we're going to go up against the skill saw. We're going to, it's going to be a timed event. What we're going to be cutting today is this. This is a very dry seasoned Douglas fir full dimension 6x6. Six six. So I got a knot right there. We'll, we'll come over here just a little bit. It's going to be a timed event. We're going to cut through both. We're going to cut, use both saws, cut all the way through and see which one's faster and which one does a better job and just what the overall experience is. So let's have a look at the contestants here. So the skill saw, Mag 77, very powerful. My favorite tool, magnesium frame, the Mag 77, which is just like the other one. It costs a little bit more because it's lighter weight. Same power, pretty much the same thing, but man, what a great saw, one of my favorite tools. The blade I have on there is a general purpose Diablo, slightly used, not very much. It's probably got about a week's worth of use on it, very light use, so it's got a good sharp blade. It's got a brand new cord, so that ought to help too. Moy representing Japan. Man, isn't it a beautiful saw? This is the, help me with my pronunciation, Gaikucho? Gaikucho pole saw. This is beautiful. This is the razor saw uh, made in Japan here. I this saw is so, uh, so nice uh, because it's got two different cutting patterns on it. See, we've, we've got right there, we've got the, the cross cutting. Look at those teeth. Man, it's a big saw. I think this may be the biggest saw that they make. We've got the cross cutting, and then here, by flipping it over, we've got ripping teeth. That makes it a really versatile saw. One saw does both things. You grab it, flip it. I think it's a wonderful design. I mean, it'd be nice to have cutting teeth on both sides so your saw lasts twice as long, but I guess you could always buy two. Traditional style handle. We got a wood handle wrapped in something. I don't know, some sort of a natural fiber. Very well done, very well executed, replaceable blade. I'm excited to see how it stacks up. So I want to try to make this contest as fair as possible. So here's the procedure. Here's the tools we're going to use. I've got a speed square, the official Wrangler Star Modern Homesteading Dixon pencil, hearing protection, eye protection, and over there, just out of frame, is the extension cord. So from the start, the timed event is going to be preparing the tool for the competition. The skill saw will have to don and don, don, doff, don, don the proper safety equipment, go over quickly, plug it in, take my speed square, my pencil, draw the line on three sides, four sides for that, three sides for the pole saw. Are you ready for the excitement? All right, we're gonna do a Monte Carlo start. On your mark, go. Oh, got to draw the line on three sides. What am I going to see? Oh, should we extension cord. race? Should we rush? All right, three sides. Here we go. Come on, Japan. Oh, the wrong side. Sorry, sorry. Second, second. The competition is not just speed, but accuracy as well. It's a big old piece of wood for a handsaw. Careful. Getting tired. <laughs> I'm off my mark. I'm definitely off my mark. I'm with tactical clogs on. Getting tired. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We're getting sloppy. Oh, that's a terrible cut. Terrible. Getting combined. Getting cut and crooked. Oh, it doesn't cut all the way through. Oh, man, come on. A little help from Japan. Finish strong. Should have clamped it. Ha! Ah, 
Oh, I dropped my sock. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's not a good cut. Poor, poor thing. Get your buff on, I'll tell you that, though. Hey, heart racer. What do you think, huh? Oh, what do you think, huh? You say hi? What do you think of that saw, huh? My God. Oh. oh, that was great. Let's uh, let's let's take a look at the at the results. Okay, right here, uh, the short one here. Which one was which here? This is the skill saw. Skill here, and uh, J J Japan here. Okay, so what we see here with the skill saw is. You know, I had to cut through four sides and that, it worked actually pretty good. It's a decent cut. It's something you could finish off with your your uh, uh, hand plane a little bit, but still, you know, not uh, even following the lines there, you know, it's not, it's not always a guarantee, but pretty good. You can see that center section there where the blade just doesn't reach and you have to finish off that little one inch square there with a, with a six and, six and three quarter size saw, but not a big deal. But overall, I'd say pretty good reasonably square but this on the other hand <laughs> was, was, was not the fault of the saw by any means this is certainly user error and uh not 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 great <laughs> you can see if you look at the side there you can see i got a little bit uh, a little bit crooked i i i uh, went too fast and pushed on too hard and it didn't didn't uh, get through but pretty amazing isn't it for a little a pole saw like that a relatively small saw Pretty lightweight, small curve to be able to cut through. Uh, that's pretty hard, you know. I mean, there you can see how crooked I got. That's that's not the saw, saw's fault, I guarantee you. That's, that's, that's my fault. Uh, but you can see, um, pretty amazing. This fur, when it gets, you know, this is really dry. You know, it's some people call it a real soft wood. It, you know, when it gets, it gets kind of hard. It does get a little bit hard when it gets dry, and and uh, it's certainly not oak or hickory or maple or anything. But it's not. It's not like balsa wood or pine either. But, uh, that's kind of interesting. So, so what did we learn here? What did we learn? We learned, well, we probably learned absolutely nothing. I think that's pretty fun to see how these old tools, or this is an old tool, but hand tools, how they stack up against the modern power tools. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm not dogmatic about one or the other. I am happy, I'm really happy to have, be able to have both and to use both. Uh, but I think that, you know, as I always say, each one has its place. That's why, uh, that's why the motto for the channel is modern homesteading. And modern homesteading to me is, is uh, using a combination of the both, not completely turning our back on, uh, on um, simpler ways or the older ways, but embracing those and also uh, being very blessed to be able to have uh, modern tools as well, generators and pumps and skill saws and cordless drills and all of those things. So. Um, I, I had this idea to do this test last night when I, just before I went to bed and I woke up Mrs. W and said, I think this would be a lot of fun. We could do a lot of different challenges with a lot of different tools. For example, how does a hand planer, electric planer go up against a good sharp hand planer? So what I wanted you guys to do was to put in the comments what challenges you'd like to see. We'll could just do these short videos where we'll take a modern day power tool, provided that I have it. If I don't have it, I'll do my best to get a hold of it versus how it stacks up against something that's old, you know, from hand planes or bit and brace, things like that. Do that side by side comparison. So in the comment, put your, what you'd like to see in the, the tool challenge. And I think that we could do several of these and it would be pretty fun. So did you know, you probably know that Sunday is Father's Day. Father's Day is Sunday. And if you're looking for some last minute gift ideas, man, have I got something for you. Modern homesteading. Rediscovering the American Dream is the book that Mrs. W and I wrote and went into its second printing. And when uh, our publisher contacted us a couple days ago and said we were digging in the deep recesses of the publishing house and we found 100 remaining signed copies that were signed originally by first print copies by Mrs. W and myself, and those are available. So if you would like, I don't know if it'll get there in time, it may be a couple days late. Um, if you would like, um, a good gift for a loved one, I invite you to order the book. I'll put it in the link there and down in the subject heading as well as the cards. And what the book is about, if you don't know already or haven't read it, it's, um, it's our story. Our story is uh, of making the decision about 10 years ago or so 
to give up our jobs. Uh, Mrs. W was working at a big, high, powerful, prestigious job, and I had a internet, uh, su really successful internet business that uh, was, we both of us were working 80, 100 hours a week. Many of you know the story. And then, of course, um, uh, we, Mrs. W and I, we, we dated for about a year, and we got married, and uh, she we, immediately she was pre got pregnant on our honeymoon. So we had Jack right away. And um, when we had him, we, we saw that the, the lifestyle that we had, you know, we had, were making lots of money and good jobs and beautiful house. We built our dream house and had built my dream shop. Um, it just it wasn't where it's at. It was not what we wanted. It was not the environment that we wanted to raise our, our children in. And I never have, I never wanted to come off and make someone think or, any, or preach to anyone that our decision or our way of life is superior to yours. It's not. It just, for us, it was something that we needed to do and it has turned out to be a tremendous blessing and the best decision we ever made. It was frightening. It was a, a scary thing to walk away from that comfortable lifestyle and and those great paying jobs and the huge income that we cut in half when Mrs. W decided, or we decided together for her to uh, become a stay-at-home mom and homeschool. But I'll tell you what, God has been so faithful to us that uh, I worried and stewed when we made that decision. It was a, one of the scariest things I've ever had to do. And we have uh, never been without. We didn't always have a lot, but we always had enough. And God has made up the, the difference and he's provided for us in ways that I never could foresee or never saw possible. So, so that's what I'm kind of getting around or going around about way. That's the, what's in the book is that, is that story. It, it's um, a very candid look. It's a very honest look of things that we did wrong, huge mistakes that we made, uh, successes that we had as well. And it, it, it kind of fills in all the blanks. So one of my favorite thing is, is, is the, it's got a lot of photography in it that my friend Alan did some of it. I did quite a bit of it myself. We've also included a map of the homestead. It's kind of fun, it kind of lays everything out, helps you put in perspective. And like the map, what the book does is it fills in all of the, um, the blanks. You know, I have, I don't know what, 1500 some odd videos up. And who, who has time, really, very few to go back and go through all of that. And there's, it's hard to get the big picture. You know, why, how come you got here and what happened to the off-grid place? And, and the book, it, it details that all. It's from start to finish, and it helps to really give you the whole picture, the big story. So that's it. Modern Homesteading, Rediscovering the American Dream. A nice gift. Uh, you can jump in there quick because those signed copies are going to be gone very quickly. And we'll uh, leave your recommendations in the comment section of what tool challenge you'd like to see. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.